everybody. <laughs> so, um, I've had quite a long day today. Um, I took my first ever trip into an Ikea this morning, uh, because up until now, the closest Ikea to my house was a state away. <laughs> Um, and now that we've got one that's just opening this week, like, in my city, I feel like I'm just gonna become, like, the most basic of bitches. Uh, and that was <laughs> unrelated to anything we need to talk about. But, uh, I'm also trying this, uh, this beer for the first time, which I took a sip of just now. It was really fucking delicious. It's a, uh, Coconut Porter by City Lights Brewing Company, which is a local brewery here. I definitely don't usually have really good luck with coconut beers, but this one is just like doing something for me. I really, I'm into it. Anyway, I should maybe like get to the point of this video eventually and then burp a little bit. Um, anyway, so um, Mother's Day is this weekend. Um, and I thought it might be kind of fun to do a video about my mom, because she's the best. Um, but this is also a book channel, and books are a big part of my life, and I mentioned in my booktube movie tag that my mom is actually the one who taught me to read. And, uh, so I thought it might be fun to talk about books that remind me of my mom. Um, I don't know if anybody else has done this or if this is like really lame, but to be completely honest, I like don't give a fuck because like I said, my mom is the best. So there'll be a few different reasons that something will remind me of my mom. Um, and I'll kind of explain what those reasons are as I talk about them. Um, and then I've also got one that reminds me of my grandma. I um, thought I would talk about the badass women in my life. So I guess I'll start with the one that's like about that reminds me of my grandma, because um, I've only got the one. And then I can tell you about my grandma. My grandmother always used to buy all of us gifts on Mother's Day, um, <laughs> because according to her, we wouldn't be mothers without you guys. Um, and, like my family's really fucking weird, you guys, but I just, I think that's like the cutest fucking grandma thing my grandma could have ever done. She was, the sweetest unless you made her angry and then she would literally tell you to shove things up your ass but uh the book that i have that reminds me of my grandma um has nothing to do with any of that it's just a book that reminds me of my grandma and that is the monster at the end of this book starring lovable furry old grover um this is obviously a children's picture book and this is my copy from when i was just a wee little tot um and my grandma actually bought me this book she would always pretend to be surprised by, like, the plot twist that Grover was the monster. Oh shit, I just, like, spoiled this book for you guys. Um, but she always pretended to be surprised no matter how many times I made her read this, and that's just my grandma in a nutshell for you. She was quite a lady. Um, anyway, so the ones I have that remind me of my mom, um, but so I've got, so I've got five here, and they all, I have a associations with my mom for different reasons, so I'm just going to talk about each one like a little bit. Um, so first I have the one that I talked about in my booktube newbie tag, which is the first book I ever read. It's the one my mom used to teach me to read, and it's called Tip and Mitten, um, and it's about a puppy and a kitty and the children who love them, and um, it's got like pencil writing in it from when my mom had it when she was a little kid because this is one of the books that she had when she learned how to read. The next book I have that reminds me of my mom is Where the Heart Is by Billy Letts. Um, I bought this a couple years ago at a used book sale and um, I, my original plan was to buy a second copy of this for my mom so that we could like read it together and then watch the movie and compare and judge the differences, like we often do, like I always do, um, because this is a movie, the Where the Heart Is, the movie adaptation of this is one that my mom and I used to watch together all the fucking time when I was younger. Um, my mom and I lived in this apartment and had a 13-inch TV with no cable and a built-in VCR because it was the late 90s to early 2000s, and, um, we would go to Target and buy movies out of the $5 bin and watch them, and that was one of the movies that we bought. We also really liked um, Anywhere But Here 
which is also a book that I could um, possibly do the same thing with. It's by Mona Simpson. Um, I don't have a copy of that one, otherwise it would also be in this video, but um, I think I might, I'm still on the hunt for a second copy of this one for like a decent price that's in decent condition so I can give it to my mom. And I might do the same thing with Anywhere But Here. Um, and if I do, let me know if you'd like to see my mom featured in a video. Maybe we could do a review. That could be fun. I could probably talk her into that. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> um, anyway, the third book I have that reminds me of my mother dearest is um, The Outsiders by Essie Hinton. I've talked about this before on this channel. I talked about this before on Drunken Library a million times. This is one of my favorite books of all time, and if you had asked me any time before, like, a year or so ago, I would have said this was my favorite book. Johnny Cade, who is a character in this, is my all-time, forever fictional love of my life. Um, <laughs> he's, he's so wonderful and perfect and beautiful. Anyway, it's fine. I'm not still, like, hot for a fictional character who's, you know, whatever, it's fine. Um, but The Outsiders is, um, is a book that I actually, this is a new copy, but I used to have a copy that looked a lot like this, because this is like what the first edition looked like, but that was my mom's, that she stole from her high school library, because that is a glorious tradition that runs uh, through the generations in my family. I have at least one book from my high school, middle school, and elementary school libraries on my shelves, and I have several that were from my mom's library, and one that's from my brother's high school library. Uh, we're really bad at returning school library books, apparently, but um, Outsiders is a book that my mom read in high school and loved enough to steal it from her school library, and uh, she gave me her copy when I was in, I think, fifth grade, and that was the first time I read it, and it just, like, it captured my heart and my soul, and um, I don't know, she passed on the love of the book, and so anytime I read it now, aside from just already loving the story, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy because I think of my mom. Kind of in the same vein as The Outsiders, it doesn't give me the same association necessarily because I don't have quite as much of a sentimental attachment to this story, but this reminds me of my mom for a similar reason because she stole this book from her school library and passed it on to me, and it's also about, like, you know, weird gangs of past times. And this book is called Brass Knuckles, and I forget who it's by. Let me check right quick. Um, by Reverend Raymond J. O'Brien. So this has got definitely like a little bit of a religious message. It takes place in like a religious school setting, but it's about like a kid from the wrong side of the tracks who gets mixed in with the wrong crowd. The first time I read this, it fucked me up, though. Like, I was pretty young, and there's, like, some violence and some weird, it's, like, shit that goes down, and I've literally never heard anybody else ever even mention knowing that this book exists. And then the last book I have here that I have associated with my mom is the one that has the funniest story associated with it, um, and that book is called My Darling, My Hamburger, and it's by Paul Zindel, or Zindel, I think it's Zindel. I honestly don't know, but can we just, like, appreciate this, like, trash Sweet Valley High cover that this fucking book has? Um, this is a book that my mom used to talk about when she was talking about, like, books she loved when she was a teenager, and she told me the title of it, and for years I told her that I didn't believe that this book really existed because the title was so fucking ridiculous and I was just like mom there's no way that's a real book that's not a real book you're making it up and she didn't still have her copy um so she couldn't prove me wrong <laughs> but um I get many wonderful qualities from my mother and some not so wonderful ones including my stubbornness and need to always be right and uh so in order to prove me wrong and prove to me that this book really did exist, my mother went on a little internet search mission to purchase a copy of this book because she couldn't just show me a picture because I could have accused her of photoshopping it or something. Um, and she bought me a copy of this book, um, but it's like a teen romance story, but it actually gets like weirdly heavy at points. 
if you ever happen upon a copy of this and you want to, you know, read what the teens were reading in the 1970s, you should give this a shot. It's like itty bitty. It's a teeny tiny book. It's not very long. Anyway, um, that is, like I said, the last one that reminds me of my mom with the funniest story associated with it. Um, let me know if you've read any of these or if you think my family is weird and wonderful like I do down in the comments. Let me know if you have any books that like remind you of your mom or a mother figure because not everybody is um, fortunate enough to have a mom who has a relationship with them like I do. Um, or just let me know maybe some some other books you think I would let, I don't know, talk to me in the comments. I'm lonely and need friends. Um, and happy Mother's Day if you are a mom. Um, I hope you're all having a great day. Um, if this is a hard day for you, I'm sending you strength. Uh, that was a little too serious for this channel, I guess, but I hope you guys have a great day. Bye!